This is an HBA, and this, and this, and this. Hi, my name is Petar, and you're watching Tech Jumble. Today, we'll be discussing different types of HBA cards and their capabilities. All right, so let's discuss design of these HBA cards. These three were designed to interact with external JBOD units, while this one was designed to interact either with internal drives or internal backplane. One major difference between HBA cards is the connector shape, size and count. For example, this card uses SFF8644 connector and this card uses SFF8643 connector. This one has four and this one has two connectors. HBA cards also vary in terms of their PCIe specification and connection speed. The number of drives an HBA can handle is directly proportional to the number of connectors it has and consequently the number of cables that can be plugged into them. Another difference lies in SAS generation. For instance, this card is a SAS 2 card, while this one is a SAS 3 card. The main disparity between the two is the bandwidth they can provide per SAS lane. A SAS 2 card offers a 6 gigabit per second link, while SAS 3 card provides 12 gigabits per second link. There are also SAS 1 cards, but they only support 3 gigabits per second link per lane, I would not recommend using SAS1 cards for a modern setup as they are being deprecated and lack software support. Every SAS HBA connector can connect up to 4 drives at varying speeds. If you have a SAS2 card and connect it to a SAS3 capable drive, the HBA will negotiate a link speed of 6 gigabits per second, since that's the maximum speed the card can handle. In other words, the speed of the link is determined by the weakest link in the chain. If your HBA has two connectors, you will have eight SAS lanes available, with each lane supporting one drive, either SAS or SATA. Using SAS HBA with the SAS drive allows for a duplex connection, enabling both devices to send and receive data simultaneously. However, SATA drives do not have duplexing ability. While establishing a duplex connection is not essential when connecting to a single drive, it becomes crucial when connecting JBODs and backplanes to HBAs. In a home or home lab environment, HBAs are often connected directly to disks. However, in a data center setting, this is rarely the case. Typically, hard drives can read and write at speeds of up to 250 megabytes a second. However, even a SAS tooling provides more than double that bandwidth. Therefore, it is inefficient to use only a portion of theoretical maximum bandwidth of a SAS lane. Instead, in a data center setting, you would connect HBAs to a backplane or an external JBOD unit. Both the backplane and the JBOD unit are likely to have a SAS expander, which is a chip that expands the available SAS lanes to connect all the drives it supports. Additionally, both backplanes and external JBODs often have the ability to daisy chain with each other. This allows you to use one card and connect to a massive pool of drives, often up to 1024 drives with IT firmware loaded, per card. There are numerous configurations available on the market for both JBODs and backplanes, but covering all of them would be beyond the scope of this video. This is a SAS expander. You have the option to get an expander on its own like this unit that I have right here. While it has a PCI connector, it does not actually need to be connected to the board at all in order for it to function. You just need to supply it with power, and voila, you have a functioning expander, which you can use as you see fit. You can connect it directly to the drives, to JBODs, backplanes, or to another expander if you so wish. SAS expander allows you to connect multiple hosts to the same pool of drives, which offers great flexibility when configuring your storage array. This concludes our discussion on different types and capabilities of HBA cards and expanders. Stay tuned for more exciting tech content on TechJumble. Thanks.